What team? That's what I thought. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. I think you should all buckle up because today we have a bit of a long video. So grab your popcorn, grab a hot chocolate and let's dive into High School Musical. All three of them, the most iconic trilogy of all time. I'm so glad that I had these three films as a child. I honestly think that if anything, they have more of a meaning. They hold more to me now. So I guess in this video, we're going to talk about why they hold more meaning to me now. Also, I should say, this video will probably be very stop-starty because it is a long video to I'm gonna start this video by ranking all the high school musicals. I want to stress before I do this that this is my personal ranking. I think there's a difference between your favourite and the best. I can't really explain it in any other words than that. We're gonna rank the high school musicals from my least favourite to my favourite and we're starting off on a little bit of a controversial note because my least favourite high school musical would have to be High School Musical 2. Maybe this is just because I hate summer and I can understand why people think that this this is the best high school musical because it is probably better than high school musical one although we have those iconic scenes Troy and Gabriella at the pool Troy and Gabriella at the golf course the tea necklace which we will get to because we've got questions about that necklace which just don't have answers to. There's not really that much that happens in this film. Yeah, it's like summer break, so they're kind of just doing summer break. I just feel like the other two films have more meaning. And I mean, we will get onto each film in on a deeper level because there's a lot of things in High School Musical 2 which just don't make sense. I'm gonna say it short now, but Troy deserved better. I've got very mixed views about Sharpay, but that deserves probably its own video. I will say, even as a kid, I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the other two. The next film on my ranking would have to be High School Musical 1. Yes, this is probably, no, this is definitely the most cringy High School Musical, but I mean, they're all cringe. They're all musicals, like what do you expect? So how else can you execute a musical without it being cringe? I mean, they're probably there are ways. There's definitely some musicals that I like that aren't necessarily cringe. So like I say, this film is probably worse than High School Musical 2, but in my personal preference, I can appreciate the first High School Musical more than the second. I think that this just goes down to the meaning of the film. Don't get me wrong, not every film has to have like a deep message or a deep meaning, but if I'm analysing each of these films, then I would have to say I just personally don't prefer High School Musical 2 to the others. High School Musical 1 has the most skips in, in terms of the songs. The songs aren't really that good. I mean, in the other films, they're better. And actually, let's talk about the songs in High School Musical. The songs in High School Musical are so meaningful. Like, pretty much every single song has its meaning and fits really well into High School Musical. And I don't stand by that when it comes to Huma Huma. Like, what even was that song? <laughs> After all, this film did start, like, this series of iconic films. So you can't put it down for that. The meaning of the film... And this actually does link quite well to like my opinions of Sharpe, which again, I'll get to. But the whole meaning of High School Musical is basically saying that you don't have to just be boxed into one thing. And in High School Musical 1, out of all the High School Musicals, it does it the best. And that's why I don't say that High School Musical is the worst film. For example, Troy doesn't have to just be the basketball guy. If anything, it's actually more surprising and more of a talent to be more than one thing, to be a basketballer and a singer. And in this film, Taylor and Chad are both really bad friends. There's a part where they're basically saying that doing just one thing is gonna get you further than doing multiple things. 
which is just something that I don't agree with. Another thing I could say about this film is Sharpay is annoying in this and mean. We'll get to that, we will get to that. So that leaves High School Musical 3 as the superior, the best, my favourite High School Musical. That is because I feel like I've always said this even when I was a kid. It is for me the most special one, the one with the most amount of meaning, the one that I, I suppose I relate to the most I guess. I think that film does a really good portrayal of like representing what it's like growing up as a teenager and the pressures of doing that especially through Gabriella and Troy. I also feel like Gabriella and Troy are really the only characters that show as much of a realistic representation of the pressures of growing up. I don't know whether I just relate to like their struggles with growing up and things like that. The songs do that so well as well. High School Musical 3 symbolizes the end of an era. It's just, that's why it's so special to me. The songs are the best in this film for sure. I think these are the main points as to why my ranking is that. We are going to deep dive more into each film, but before we do that, I just want to say Zeke deserves the same amount of hype that Troy gets. Yes, he doesn't really do anything and actually we'll get onto the basketball guys because they're so like icky. I really hate that word, but like I don't really know another word to like describe it. He's just as gorgeous as Troy. So let's take it back to the start of this iconic trilogy. Obviously there was a lot of improving to do. It was the first of the iconic trio of films. Let's talk about it in more detail. The point that this film is raising, and we're gonna start on this note because I've already mentioned it, the point that this film is trying to raise, and I think does a really good job of it, especially with stick to the status quo, is that you don't have to just be known for one thing. Just because you're the basketball guy doesn't mean that you can't perform in the school show. And just because you're a basketballer doesn't mean you can't cook or bake. Just because you're like a brainy geek at school doesn't mean that you can't enjoy hip hop. Like we all have a variety of talents and a variety of interest. I just hate that stigma and I don't even really think that stigma is really that deep in real life. The stick to the status quo scene is so well performed and portrayed in terms of that particular message. No, no, no. I'm not really keen on the song stick to the status quo. In terms of meaning it's I can't, I can't fault it. In terms of that message, in the other films, it is less of a issue. This is the only thing that doesn't really make sense about this kind of message is in High School Musical 2, and this probably goes back to why I don't really enjoy High School Musical 2 as much as the other one, the baseball scene which is iconic, such an iconic scene we'll get to. The thing that doesn't make sense about this scene is that Chad is known for his basketball and now he's playing baseball and no one reacts the same way as how they did when they found out that Troy does basketball and sings at the same time. In the same way that Ryan is also doing baseball but no one's reacting the same way that they did when they found out that Troy sings as well as does basketball. I just feel like the baseball part of High School Musical was kind of just there and it wasn't really picked up on anywhere else in any of the three films apart from that one time in High School Musical 2. I think that as a whole, the whole film is using this message as a way of saying your identity is way more complex than just being one thing and I think that's actually done really well through the character of Sharpay. I have so many mixed views of Sharpay. She's both like a villain but also the hero. I don't even know how you can get that into one person. I'm not going to talk about that quite just yet but one of the ways that it links with the, this message that I've just been talking about. In the second film, when Sharpay is 
talking to her family about Troy. She says something like, basketball and golf isn't just when it ends with Troy, he can also sing. So it's taking that like stigma that was in the first film and making it something that isn't a stigma anymore. The way which I see Gabriella fitting in this message of this film is I think that East High represents a new beginning, the start of something new for Gabriella in the sense that she's the new girl. It's a new beginning and she can take this opportunity to not just be the school's geeky maths girl. I don't want to be the school's freaky genius girl again. That allows her to gain new interests, singing, start performing, doing the school show. She even says something like, do you ever feel like there's this whole other person in you trying to find a way of getting out? I think that throughout the first film, doing the school show is that new person for Gabriella to become. One other big point which is raised in I think all three films is do what you want to do and not care about what other people think about it. This I think is portrayed through probably multiple characters but more so Gabriella and Troy and I think that Chad and Taylor are really good examples of how, how easily you can let other people's opinions push you down. In High School Musical 1, it goes without saying how bad Chad is as a friend and how bad Taylor is as a friend. Like, if you're not happy for your friends and if you're not encouraging them to do what you want to do, then what kind of friend are you? And I think that this is really evident in all three films. Not so much High School Musical 3, but I still do feel like it is shown through the way that Zeke and Jason react to when Miss Darbus gives Troy the offer from Juilliard. And yes. lastly, Mr. So Troy so Bolton. What? <laughs> the way that the basketball team are presented throughout the whole three films is very icky to me. I feel like they represent like very laddish behaviour and nothing gives me the ick more than that. I hate saying like the word ick but I don't know another way of saying it. It's just a massive red flag. It also makes me cringe so much when the characters say song titles in their lines and they do this throughout all three films. In the third film, they really milk the 16 minutes at the start of the film for the, the basketball match. Because here's the number that matters. 16. There's 16 minutes left. 16, 16, 16 more minutes, get ready, game on! I feel like for the first film, I don't really have an awful amount of notes compared to the notes that I have for two and three. And I think that Sharpay really does link very well into moving on to the second film. So I'm going to start by talking about how Sharpay is represented in the first film. And she is annoying. For all you can say that Sharpay deserves so much better, I can see where you're coming from. Yes, she has worked for performing her whole life and it is actually something that she's genuinely interested in, but we all know a Sharpay in real life and boy are they annoying. The big issue that I have with Sharpay is that in order to get what she wants, she feels like she has to push other people down. Pushing people down and get you where you wanna go. In the first film, she is very, very annoying. And I feel like she does become less annoying in the third film. At the end of the day, by no means am I saying I don't like the character Sharpay. I actually really do. I just have, I have a complicated relationship with her. So editing Becca here, I realised that I didn't say one of the main things that I wanted to say about Sharpay. And at the start of the video, when I'm talking about the overarching, over, overall message of like High School Musical, particularly the first one, the film is trying to raise points like you don't have to just be known for one thing and you can just try new things. And I said that this really links well with the character of Sharpay, but I didn't really expand on it. So 
I'm gonna try my best to explain what I mean by that. Because that is like the overarching message in High School Musical, especially the first one. One of the reasons why I don't agree with when people say that Sharpay deserves better is because the whole point in High School Musical is to show that you can start something new and you can do more than one thing, i.e. Troy can be the basketball guy but also he can do the show as well and Gabriella can be the math science nerd but also she can sing and she can do the school show. I basically mentioned all of these examples in the video already but like Zeke can do basketball but he can also bake. So I guess what I'm trying to say is because Sharpay's character doesn't really fit that specific narrative and instead she has things against people for trying stuff new. That's why I don't agree with when people say things like Sharpay deserves better. In some elements, which I will get to in the video, I do agree with the fact that she does deserve better. I hope that makes sense. Well, Sharpay apologist, you're wrong. Sharpay never deserved that role. She's not a good fit for it. She was supposed to come in an audition, a slow love ballad, and she changed it. Which shows me she can't do it. She does upbeat showstoppers very well. But if she can't do a slow love ballad, she doesn't deserve to be the romantic lead in a play. She uses her money to fund spectacle to make up for the fact that she has no range. And we see this happen twice. It happens in the second one. Theater is not always about who is the best technical singer. It's about who is the best fit for that role. She has no romantic chemistry with anyone. And she can't sing the songs as written. Not to mention she has complete disrespect for her crew and her other cast members. And all this shows me that she has no love for the actual craft of theatre, she just does it because it feeds her ego and makes her the centre of attention. And as a former children's theatre director, if I had seen the way she was behaving to all those other students, I would have kicked her off the production entirely. Troy and Gabriella are the clear match for that role. They have actual romantic chemistry, they treat everyone with respect, and they sing the songs as written. She also doesn't treat people very nicely. Do you want us to lose the Star Dazzle Award to a bunch of... Dishwasher? You have to save something. And when I'm at the balcony, don't forget the special. You're always forgetting the special. If we're talking about like High School Musical 1 Sharpay, I do not like her. In the first film, it is very evident that Ryan is basically just her puppet. And I think that is portrayed throughout the second one and the third one as well. What about Huma Huma? Change your plans. What am I supposed to do with my Tiki Warrior outfit? Save it for Halloween. Go to Luo, sell it online. I don't know. Did you get a copy of that song from Kelsey? Uh, no, but I'm taking her to prom. <gasps> Brilliant. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Ryan deserves so much more. Stop saying that Sharpay deserves more. Ryan is the one that deserves more. Firstly, him and Kelsey could have been a, such a good couple, but we'll also get onto that because I also really ship Ryan and Chad. But in the first film, she basically tells Kelsey that she's not good enough without even hearing any of her music or even giving her a chance. Sharpay also does this with Gabriella because Gabriella being the new girl, I think that that's something that Sharpay envies. It seemed like you knew Troy Bolton. Not really. He was just showing me around. <laughs> well, Troy usually doesn't interact with new students. Probably a few reasons why Sharpay envies Gabriella so much and one of them is probably because she's the new girl and she's got it all really. She has talent. She has brains. For all you might disagree what I'm about to say and I will get onto this, Sharpay kind of sees Troy as like a token to be cool. Going back to Ryan, we actually do not see enough of him in this film. All in all, I do feel like Sharpay starts out as being a villain or a vil villainous kind of character. She's shown to be someone who gatekeeps. I feel like there is a lot of gatekeeping in High School Musical. The basketball team like to gatekeep basketball, especially Chad. Chad resembles that for the basketball team as a whole. Sharpay gatekeeps performing, even from her own twin brother. Editing me here again. Another thing which I didn't touch on in the video, since we're on the topic of gatekeeping, another thing that Sharpay really gatekeeps is Troy. And I don't think she really realizes this 
until Gabriella turns up at East High how much she actually wants Troy for something. Maybe the way that she sees Gabriella turning into someone through being so close with Troy, she wants that and she feels like Troy is the only way that she can really get into being the main star in a school show because that's how Troy and Gabriella did it and it's almost like Troy and Gabriella took her place. The only reason why Sharpay wants the main role in these school shows is as an ego thing and I think Troy also symbolises this ego thing for Sharpay. I guess what I'm trying to say is if Sharpay actually focused more on her own talents rather than pushing other people down then yes she would get her way and she would deserve it a bit more. However I do feel sorry for Sharpay in the sense of how she's treated with Tiara in High School Musical 3 which I'll probably get on to later because I don't really see the relevance of Tiara you know like moving on to High School Musical 2 we're going to continue to talk about Sharpay now in their second High School Musical for all Sharpay is helping Troy with everything in her power and in that sense I do understand why people say that she deserves better in this film However, everything that she does for Troy initially stems for something to benefit her. For example, she only wants him to work at the summer thing so that she can use him as a token to be cool. Going back to that thing because I do think that that's at least her main aim with Troy. And going back to Troy in High School Musical 2, he deserves so much better. The way that his friends continue to treat him when he's only doing things for himself and he's focusing on himself in this film and his friends are not supporting him. Troy Bolton was held back by his friends. At the beginning of the movie, Gabriella and the rest of their buddies were unable to find jobs until Troy got them all positions at the Evans Country Club. But then they all proceed to get mad at him when Sharpay helps him earn more money, meet sports recruiters, and play basketball with collegiate athletes. Obviously, Sharpay was doing all that to seduce Troy, but clearly he's not into her. He was making the best of the situation while the rest of East High was complaining about the work they were doing, the woman who got them their job, and the reality that there were rules at the country club. Just because Troy asked Chad for a slice of cheese on a sandwich once, was unable to invite his teammates to a closed practice, and was late to a few dates with Gabriella, doesn't mean he was becoming a bad guy. The truth is that while Gabriella kept getting Troy into trouble, Sharpay was helping Troy and everyone at East High. And at the end of the day, Sharpay's main motive is to get Troy to sing with her. Sharpay continues to not treat Ryan very well throughout this film. Oh, I love the friendship that Ryan and Gabriella have in this film and we should have seen more of it. I love the fact that Ryan got more screen time. Going back to when Sharpay was pushing Kelsey down, having not even heard any of the songs that she'd written, or any of her talent. Later in High School Musical 3, Sharpay basically manipulates Ryan into trying to get him to get Kelsey's songs. She even admits that Kelsey always writes Troy and Gabriella the best songs. In the second film, I also feel like there's a real toxic representation of success. What I mean by that is I feel like continuously throughout the second film Sharpay tries to win over Troy by showing off her dad's wealth. He introduces himself literally in a helicopter. So where's your dad? The way that Sharpay presents herself in the second film is in this over glamorized way in a unhealthy way. At the end of the day Sharpay focuses more on other people than her talent. At the end of the day as well High School Musical would not be High School Musical without Sharpay. She is basically the backbone of all three films. For all High School Musical 2 does have the most iconic scenes. Pool scene with Troy and Gabriella, the golf course scene. 
the tea necklace, which in the iconic song. I gotta go my own way. Don't wanna leave it behind. Other iconic scenes would obviously have to include the baseball scene. I don't dance. I know you can. With Ryan and Char. The little date that they have because there was definitely something going on between them. And I don't know why we only saw it in High School Musical 2. As much as I ship Chad and Ryan as a couple, I also really do like Ryan and Kelsey as a couple. I think they would have actually been such a good couple because they're both so into music. I think that most of the hate that I have for this film, it's not even hate, it's just not as much of an appreciation for this film is just purely because I don't like Summer. I've already spoken about this but I do genuinely think that the baseball scene doesn't really make sense. As iconic as it is, it doesn't really make sense. This film has so many iconic scenes, but they don't really make sense. If we go back to the start of the film, I don't understand why they have to make... I mean, this is a musical, obviously, but realistically, you wouldn't want to make a big song and dance about the fact that it's summer break. You would probably just want to get home, right? What time is it? Party time. So many things in this film actually don't make sense. As iconic and fabulous as the song Fabulous is, why is there a piano in the pool? Excuse me. Thank you. Some of the ways in which the characters talk to each other is just like not how normal high school teenagers actually talk to each other. Troy is referred to as hoops and that makes me cringe so much. I mean I've already spoken about this too but I'm so confused about Huma Huma. I don't know if I've said this already. I swear that every time a song comes on it literally just resembles the fact that these characters are on drugs. I mean it is a musical after all but in the third High School Musical at the start when Gabriella stands up from the crowd at the basketball match Troy is definitely on drugs like that isn't actually happening he is hallucinating I'm so sure I think that it, it goes the same for Huma Huma I think Troy is just hallucinating and it's not really happening I get that Gabriella is mad at Troy for like forgetting these dates but the reasons why he's missing these dates are actually really valid and honestly she's kind of a bad girlfriend. At the end of the day I also do feel like Troy should have just done the Star Dazzle award show with Sharpay. As much as I'm saying that what Sharpay's doing for Troy is initially just to benefit her. At the end of the day, Sharpay is benefiting Troy, so he should have done something to benefit her. Another thing that doesn't make sense is at the end of High School Musical 2, in the lantern scene, everyone is in a different couple. Ryan is with Martha in that one and Jason and Kelsey are together but then High School Musical 3 for the prom number it's the other way around. That's also a question that we don't ever get answers to. As much as Gotta Go My Own Way is the best song in High School Musical 2 everything is so over dramatized. Like I say Gabriella doesn't really have a valid reason to be mad at Troy. Sis, this man is just doing what's best for him and focusing on his future. And I mean this whole thing about the new Troy. Troy isn't becoming a new Troy, he's just doing what's best for him. The bet on it scene is so questionable but I love it. Everybody's always talking at me. Also, that song is so meaningful. So, moving on to the final film and my favourite, High School Musical 3. So, where do we even start with this? This film definitely has the best songs. Scream is my favourite song from all three High School Musicals. Again, at the start of this film, they really do milk the fact that they only have 16 minutes left of the big game. Because here's the number that matters. 
16. It makes me cringe so much when they say song titles out loud. And I've just mentioned, I swear Troy is hallucinating when he sees Gabriella stand up in the audience. But I feel like this film has a lot of like irrelevant characters. Tiara Gold is one of them. But also Rocket Man actually makes me cringe so much saying Rocket Man. That other guy who's always with him is basically just some guy who follows him round. Tiara even a student. She's not really a student, is she? Because she is literally just someone who's helping Sharpay. Her and Rocket Man shouldn't have got the understudy roles because this was supposed to be like an end of senior show. Rocket Man isn't even in the same school year as Troy, right? Understudy isn't a role, you moron. It means you go on if one of the leads can't make the performance. As well as Troy in this film, I think Gabriella really represents growing up realistically as a teenager. The struggles that you face as a teenager, again, this might be just something that I can personally really relate to. They put Walk Away at the best moment after her saying, I'm so much better at saying goodbye. I'm a lot better at goodbyes than you. However, the thing about Walk Away is I just feel like it doesn't really fit as a high school musical song. It's definitely my least favourite in this film. I also feel like out of all the characters, Troy and Gabriella are the only ones who really show a realistic amount of stress. There's also a lot of things that don't make sense about this film as well. Why are Troy and Gabriella so stressed that his mum could come up in the treehouse? Again, Scream is iconic, but what is he actually doing at school at that time? <laughs> What's Miss Darbus even doing there at that time? Can't knock it though because that scene is iconic and probably my favourite scene out of the whole three high school musicals. Oh my god, we never hear any of the characters say I love you. Why don't we ever see Sharpay and Ryan go to school together? My favourite line in this whole film is when Tiara says, Tiara does have a little bit of relevance and that's, that's called acting. You should try it sometime. Another thing that doesn't make sense is where does Troy get those roses from when they're doing Just Wanna Be With You? I just wanna be with you. Also, how did they all have their own dressing room? What even happened to the prom? My prom is wherever you are. The part where Troy surprises Gabriella at college how did he actually know where to park and how did he know where Gabriella was going to be? Figured you'd be the last one out of the building. And realistically, Gabriella wouldn't have been able to leave East High when she did. The fact that Miss Darbus literally put an application in for Troy for Juilliard and I don't even think that should be legal. Something else that just doesn't make sense is in the scream scene and I think there's a scene in the first film where you can see like the basketball players having a massive poster. Like why are there posters of students around the school? Oh yeah and how are they actually allowed on the roof? The many iconic scenes that there are on the school roof but how are they actually allowed up there? Troy and Chad should have got so much more for what they did to Rocketman and that other guy when they took their clothes. And I don't know why they got punished. <laughs> it's not Literally never see people do work in this film. I feel like any kind of film or TV show where the characters are at school, you never see them do work. We also don't really see many teachers. There's Miss Darbus and there's Coach Bolton, but who else? I think that ultimately High School Musical 3 just has the best representation of what it's like growing up as a teenager. Going back to Kelsey, she deserves so much better. She's actually the most dedicated, in my opinion. I think I said this before, but I do feel sorry for Sharpay in Elements. Troy didn't sing with her at the end of High School Musical 2. At the end, it just became another Troy and Gabriella show. I do f also feel sorry for Sharpay in the way that Tiara Gold 
treats her. When they're singing A Night to Remember, it actually works really, really well. So in summary, I just feel like High School Musical, for me personally, is the most special one. It brings closure to all of the three High School Musical. It has more meaning to me and it does a really good job of showing what it's like growing up as a teenager. So that is it for this video. This video took so long to film. So I really hope you enjoyed this and I worked really hard on it actually. Do give the video a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more videos like this, I'm thinking of doing one on Barbie. Do let me know. Anyway, I will see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>